they are officially seven in number. Asia, Africa, North and South America, Europe, Oceania, and Antarctica. But our planet may have more continents than it appears. Today, I would like to talk to you about one of those that has been forgotten. A continent that lived, but ended up sinking, some 80 million years ago, and which currently lies more than a thousand meters deep beneath the surface of the waves. But before we go to meet it, let's start with a little history. Imagining lost continents is not a new concept. Nearly 2,300 years ago, in these dialogues, Plato spoke of the existence of Atlantis, this mythical island which, after having known a peaceful golden age, would have ended up swallowed by the waves in an end of the world cataclysm. And while many have tried to find it without success, today we must finally admit this island, Atlantis, only exists in our imaginations. More recently, between the 15th and 18th centuries, many explorers and cartographers tried to approach the coasts of a supposed Terra Australis Inconita, a continent imagined since antiquity and which is very present on the European maps of the time of the great explorations because it is then assumed to be indispensable to balance the world, to counterbalance the surplus of emerged lands that are found in the Northern Hemisphere with its imposing Southern continental mass. And by the greatest of chances, we end up discovering that our planet does indeed possess, roughly where men imagined the presence of a hypothetical exotic continent, a huge continental mass of hostile and isolated lands, Antarctica. And then, during the 19th century, we discover that ancestors of tapirs lived both in South America and on the other side of the world, in Southeast Asia, that we find fossilized remains of Hyperions, both in France and in Florida, and we even realize that there are identical geological formations in India and Madagascar. Faced with this strangeness, many scientists, embarrassed by these enigmatic similarities, by the fact that extremely distant areas of the globe have had a common past, come to explain this mystery by drawing land bridges. They then imagine to allow terrestrial animals and plants to get to the other side of the world the presence in the past of hypothetical and wide strips of land that could run for thousands of kilometers and connect continents today separated by immense expanses of water. Thus, every time a fossil of a species or an identical geological formation are found on either side of an ocean, we take out the pencils and connect the continents. The problem is that these bridges that in the 19th century geologists draw everywhere in their imaginations seem, in reality, to have all obligingly disappeared without leaving any trace of their previous existence. And it wasn't until the middle of the 20th century that we finally admitted and proved that the continents under our feet have been drifting and moving since time immemorial in a giant puzzle game called plate tectonics. We will still have to wait nearly half a century to realize that, in reality, a lost continent has been discovered for quite some time now. Known to all, it is even inhabited. Millions of humans live at its peak and have been unknowingly gazing for centuries and every day at the emerged parts of a true mastodon that has ended up sinking. What an international team of scientists managed to show in 2017 is that there exists under the South Pacific Ocean, east of Australia, a submerged continent that extends over a total area of about 4.9 million square kilometres, which is eight times larger than the island of Madagascar, an island already so imposing that it is often referred to as a microcontinent. In fact, this territory hidden under the seas and named Zealandia is so large that when taking into account all of its submerged parts, it easily reaches twice the size of the largest island in the world, Greenland, or two-thirds the size of its imposing neighbour, Australia. An island so vast that it was literally considered a continent. Taken as a whole, the edifice that constitutes Zealandia, which rises more than a kilometre above the surrounding seabed, is by far the largest submerged continental structure on our planet. A structure of which only 6% of the surface protrudes above the water. Thus, the islands of New Zealand and New Caledonia, 
Like the few pieces of rock that barely pierce above the sea, such as the fascinating Bowl Pyramid, and these 562 metres high all rest on a mass of prodigiously enormous rocks located below, and thus in a way a part of a much larger whole, of which 94% of the area is today hidden beneath the surface of the waves. But it has not always been this way. And even if Zealandia is largely submerged today, there was a time when this continent was exposed to the open air. By studying the nature of the rocks and minerals that make up New Zealand and its emerged lands, like those around it under the seas, and comparing them with other regions of the world, researchers have been able to reconstruct much of the history of this forgotten continent and discover that it too has contributed its piece to the great puzzle of our planet's plate tectonics. It is thought today that the birth of the oldest parts of the Zealandia continent began nearly 750 million years ago. At the time when, rising to the surface from the depths of the Earth's crust, immense bubbles of magma caused a continental uplift, which staggered over millions of years, gave body within the supercontinent Rodinia to what would later become Zealandia. And the millions of years continue to pass. Thousands of volcanoes light up, almost as many go out. Inland seas dry up, others open or close. Mountains are born and then spread under the battering of erosion and the passage of time. And when the supercontinent Gondwana finally forms, the beginnings of Zealandia are already there, anchored within Pangaea to what will later become Australia and Antarctica. This piece of the great puzzle of plate tectonics then represents about 5% of the total land area of the Southern Hemisphere and it proudly stands above the oceans. But this won't last. Soon it's Pangaea's turn to start breaking apart. And this was about 180 million years ago. While the declining Gondwana begins to break up into smaller fragments that will give rise to the large land masses we know, the eighth continent, on the other hand, will gradually start to drift away and sink. Because Zelandia, which until then had been compressed between several giants, finds itself cut off from its supports. And while Australia and Antarctica are tearing apart, it will see its crust stretch, spread and thin out. And as it gains in thickness, having become terribly thin, the latter, unable to rise above the ocean floor, begins to sink over dizzying periods of time. 40 million years after separating from Australia, Zealandia's descent into the abyss is nearly complete. Then only a few islands remain above the surface of the oceans, barely protruding into the open air. The only remnant of the mountains that once populated this mostly underwater continent and whose modern descendants are New Caledonia and New Zealand, an island of which some parts have already gone under the sea. This happened millions of years ago before ending up due to the movement of the plates resurfacing. Even today, in some places, we find snapshots, as if frozen in stone, of some of the flora that grew on Zealandia about 180 million years ago during the Jurassic period before the eighth continent separated from Gondwana. In Curio Bay, at the southernmost point of New Zealand, lies a petrified forest spanning around 20 kilometres. There by the sea, you can see trees that, after being suddenly buried under thick flows of volcanic mud, were gradually replaced by silica to the point of eventually turning into stone. And these fossilised trees, after remaining buried underground for millions of years, are now exposed to the open air and the surf of the waves, like so many memories surfaced from a time when there were no grasses or flowering plants and where conifers and ferns from subtropical environments covered almost all of a small continent that has since largely sunk. And there, perhaps you are wondering deep down, what allows us to consider this huge piece of crust as a continent in its own right? Well, even if we put aside the argument of its size and the fact that for millions of years, Zealandia was emerged, there is one last crucial point. Because the deep water drillings have taught us that the characteristics of the rocks that form this enormous structure are similar to those that make up our continents. In other words, Zealandia, unlike the oceanic crust that surrounds it, 
is mainly made up of sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. To put it simply, rocks that have been eroded and deposited on the surface or compressed and formed by colliding continents. Thus, even though it is under the surface, Zealandia is of an extremely different composition than the average seabed of our planet. And the nature of the rocks that make up this submerged giant brings it even closer to our continents, with which Zealandia also shares the fact of having a much lower density than that of oceanic crusts. In fact, it is in the thickness of its crust that Zealandia finds the reason for its sinking. Because even if it, of continental nature, and several kilometers thicker than the oceanic crust of the surrounding seabed, it remains significantly thinner than that of all the other continents on our planet. And in doing so, its crust being much too thin, the eighth continent ended up underwater. And I like to think that New Zealanders, like New Caledonians, live on the remnants, the persistent peaks of a lost continent. That even if the myth of Atlantis, like the theory of land bridges, are each in their own way totally off the mark, we still ended up finding a submerged and hitherto forgotten continent. What could have been the history of the world if this imposing mass had been thick enough to protrude from the surface? If there had been, here in the South Pacific, an additional continent? Just for the pleasure of the mind game, I am open to your fantasies. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and follow me on Instagram.